Hi and welcome to Old School Blues Guitar. It is time for another lesson covering one of the great electric blues instrumentals of all time. And in this lesson we're going to look at a more, let's say a lesser known instrumental. It's called Crazy Strings by a Texas guitar player named Clarence Green. Clarence Green apparently had a group called the Rhythm Airs and there's really only one CD or record of their work that's out there and it's, it's rare and it's expensive. I got a hold of these recordings, his recordings, from a friend who had an LP called Texas Shuffle that was a compilation of different Texas guitar players and it had several Clarence Green instrumentals on it and all of them I really like and have tried to learn and I'm going to share a couple of them with you in this series. So Crazy Strings is in the key of E and it's really a fun song to play and it starts out with an introduction, a double stop introduction. So let's just get, get right into it and I'll show you the chords and everything else as we go along. It starts out like this. exactly like he does. I'll have it tabbed out in order, everything. And I'm going to teach this. There are a lot of variations in the rhythm part especially, and so I'm just going to get them all at the beginning. And when I play this, I'll play whatever I feel like playing. I don't try to copy what he did note for note. I'll do a lot of my own stuff, so it's hard for me to remember the difference between the original. Let me just show you. That first lick. He's doing this double stop, sliding from the fourth fret to the fifth fret on the second string, playing the open E. And a little slide back down. And you can play the E chord for the stop time if you have a band play and they can play it. I played this with another guitar player, a drummer, and we did it where we just all played the stop. So it's... And then again. And he does this real cool alternating fretting and open string thing on the first string. And he's just going open first string, 12th fret. Open first string, 9th fret. Same thing 7th fret. Same thing 5th fret. So it sounds like this. And then open. And then he bends the 7th fret of the 2nd string before he goes into the rhythm part. So that whole part, first part, played slowly. And then he goes into this rollicking bass rhythm. The bass rhythm now, there's a lot of variation, so I'm just going to try to show them all to you right here at once, rather than go through the whole song and try to remember the differences between each verse. It's basically over the A, he's playing over, starting with the open A, usually starts with that, and then he'll do stuff like this. There's one variation, so open, twice, fourth fret of the fifth string, second fret of the fourth string, fourth fret, second fret. And if you wanted to keep this song real simple, you could just play that here. But he doesn't do that. He does some crazy variations. The second time around in that first verse, I know he does this. Something like that, or... That's another one. Or... See the variations. There's a lot of different ways you can you can do that. And so he plays the A twice. And he goes back to the one. And over the one, he plays a lot of different stuff. Sometimes he does this. The real simple one, open six, fourth fret, second fret of the fifth string. 4-2, just like we did over the A. Sometimes he'll do this, where he's doing this little roll with the 2nd and 3rd fingers on the 3rd and 4th fret of 
the sixth string and then keeping the first finger anchored on the second fret of the fifth string. So like this. That's another variation. Or he'll do this, where he'll do a bend on the fourth fret of the fifth string. And I'm going to open sixth string, rolling into that, third, fourth on the sixth strings, second fret of the fifth string. And then I'm bending with three fingers. My ring finger is doing the main bending on the fourth fret of the fifth string. And coming back to the second fret of the fifth string. Like that. Another variation you hear later in the song is he does this. And he's going. Second, fourth fret on the fifth string. And then getting the second fret of the fourth string. And then going back the way you came. And it's really cool if you listen to the whole song, all these different very subtle variations that Clarence Green does when he's playing this. And Clarence Green, I've been able to find only a tiny number of his early recordings, and they're all spectacular, cool guitar playing, and this, this is one great example. Then when he goes to the five, he goes, or something like that. He does some variations here. So he starts on the second fret of the fifth string, and then to the sixth fret of the fifth string, and then to the fourth fret of the fourth string, which he uses as his anchor. And there's one thing you can do. Going from the fourth fret of the fourth string, sixth fret, seventh fret, and back to the sixth fret. To the fourth fret, and then to the sixth fret of the fifth string. So. Or you can do this. Where you just go. Before you go to the A. A lot of variations. You could do this. Every time you go through the progression, you can do something a little different that still sounds cool and makes the song fresh every time around. So after that first stop time, he goes into that and then winds it up with the B7th chord. And now we're ready for the next verse of Clarence Green's Crazy Strings. We've got another stop time. Now he's going to do a little different, a little variation on that hopping thing he did the first time through. He's going to start with the open string again, this time 4th frets, 5th frets, 7th fret, 9th fret, and then open, same band he did before, before he heads into the, the bass part. So let's play that again, slowly. I'll try to play it slowly. Clarence Green's Crazy Strings. It goes something like this. Let me try to play the first part of it. If I try to play the whole thing, I'm going to screw it up. So we're just going to take it a couple phrases at a time. So after he ends that next verse, he kind of jumps ahead, ahead of the beat, and starts playing this. That's the first part of the solo. So he's just playing that, that lick, on the 5th fret of the 2nd string with the 1st string open, and he slides from the 4th fret every now and then. And then right there, he's just going to put the 1st finger down on the 4th fret of the 1st string and make a double stop. This is an E. So one more time, I try to play it slowly. Then he's got to go to this really cool lick, like 
this. Pretty awesome. And he's doing these hammer on and pull offs. He's going really over the A shaped E scale between the 12th and the 9th frets. So if you think of an A chord and you put the pinky on the 5th fret of the 1st string, this is what they call a long A. It's just going to do that in E. So this is an E chord at the 9th fret. And you're not going to play that, but you're going to pretty much play over that. Starting on the 12th fret of the 1st string, you're going to pick the 12th fret of the 1st string and then hammer on pull off with the 9th fret to the 12th fret of the 2nd string. So, kind of hard to explain that. So you pick it and then pick it, pull off to the 9th fret of the 1st string and then wind up on the 9th fret of the 1st string. So the first lick sounds like that and he does it again. Does it twice and then he does this. So he's going 12th, 9th, same thing. Hammer on pull off. Winding up on the 9th fret of the 2nd string. Then he's going to go between the 11th frets and the 9th frets. On the 3rd string and on the 4th string. So the whole thing. That's the first time. He ends up going from the 4th. 11th fret of the 4th string to the 9th fret. So the whole first leg. And then when he comes back, he's going to take it a little farther. And this time he's doing that hammer on pull off thing on the 4th string. And then he's going to the bass notes on the 5th and 6th strings. This is really cool. Starts on the 9th fret of the 5th string. And he's going to do the hammer on pull off with the 7th fret. And wind up on the 9th fret of the 6th string. And then back to the 7th fret of the 5th string. To the 9th fret of the 6th string. So this lick is really complicated, but it's cool. It sounds a little off, but if you listen to the recording, I'm pretty sure that's what he's doing. And it makes sense because it's all, all right there. So, the whole solo so far, let me see if I can do this. And then he's going to do this. Some double stops, sliding from the 11th fret to the 12th fret on the 1st and 2nd string. Like that. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then he's going to go to the 15th frets and 14th fret on the 1st and 2nd strings. Pinky on the 15th fret of the 1st string. Ring finger on the 14th fret of the 2nd string. This leg. And he's going back and forth between that and the double stop at the 12th fret. So the whole thing. And then it sounds like he does this. And that winds up the first solo. So it's... So he's going from the 12th fret of the first string, 15th fret of the second string. 12th fret of the 2nd string. And then it's got a little bend on the 3rd string at the 14th fret with the 1st finger on the 12th fret of the 2nd string. And then sounds like he's walking from the 14th fret of the 3rd string to the 12th fret to the 14th fret of the 4th string. And then he does this. And he's going to go from the 12th to the 13th fret on the 3rd string to the 12th, 14th fret on the 2nd string. And then a little bend back to the 14th fret of the 2nd string. To the 12th fret of the 2nd string. 
14th fret of the third string, hammer on, 12th to 13th on the third string, 14, 12 on the fourth string, and 14th fret of the fifth string, which is the five. So that whole leg. And that is the end of the first solo for Clarence Crane's Crazy Strings.